auction time. This is the 5K series auction, 5K01. A Toya looking point. <clears throat> Toya style, translucent, heat treated, mystery chert. I don't know where I got it. I got it a while ago. I'm digging into my old stuff and I found this. I think someone might recognize it. If you if you send it to me, thank you very much because this stuff was surprisingly good. Yeah. So yeah, it's a it is a heat treat. I didn't want to go too thin with it, but I could have. It's high quality stuff. Very nice. I wish I had a bunch of this. Yeah. I've only got a few pieces left. All right. What is the length of this one? It, it's going to be, it's going to look bigger than it actually is. All right. My hands are small, so everything looks bigger. Uh, a little over two inches on the side here. Let's see. Yeah, it's about two inches. Okay. Five K zero two. It is a Perdis style point with serrations. Okay, this is a. a I believe this is a raw Texas chert, high grade raw. Yeah. I'm trying to remember where I got it from. I think this I got it. Uh, from the roadside. I think this is one of the pieces that I self-collected. It, it has that grayish look to it that a lot of the stones that I self-collected have. They have that grayish tone. Uh, luckily, there wasn't any bad spots, but it, it did get a little bit crunchy as I was trying to thin it down. So it's not too thin. Let's see. Two, a little over two and a quarter. Translucent a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I did not have trouble napping this. I just It just took me forever to try to get rid of all the uh, little step fractures. I still didn't pop them all out because I don't like leaving metal marks in the piece or on the workpiece. I could have tried to pop that one out right there. Some guys say you can you know, soak these in water and then stick them in the freezer and all those step fractures will pop. I don't know. I've never tried it. I suppose I will someday. All right. 5K03. This one is a Scalorn point out of heat-treated chert. Heat-treated Texas chert. This one is two and three quarter. It would have been around three inches, but I, I think I broke the tip. I was gonna, I was going for one of those whole Holcomb style points, but I think I broke it either the bottom or the top. It's high grade heat treat, but it spoils you, so it's easy to break because it does spoil you. It's, it's, it flakes really easy, and I almost messed it up right there. See how I took a big flake? This was toward the end of this whole process. I took a big flake so I could just thin it down a little bit more right there, and it ended, it ended up scooping out a big flake. So that it was it was perfectly tapered, but just a little bit of a bump right there, and I took a flake, and oops. Anyway. I remember that specifically because I was bummed out. Yeah. But it, it looks all right, I think. If you like serrations. I do like making this style with the serrations, so there'll be more of these coming up. And uh, I've been working on stuff on the side also. But I I really gotta learn not to do that because it messes with messes with my schedule. I have a hard enough time generating 
stuff for the auction. 5K04. Uh, I was going to do a set of three of these little ones, but I only got it. I only had enough time to do one. Uh, well, I snapped the other one that I was working on. I tried to do three of these this morning, and I only got one of them done. Cause I, and I snapped the other one. And I said, nope. There's no way I'm going to be able to do all three because it's already bumming me out. I'm already bummed out. But this one is a piece of heat treat jasper from I don't know where. It's mystery jasper. Yeah, it's just red. I like it. I got some more of this, so I'll, I'll make another one like this. And, and include it in a set of three. Uh, it might be a Scalorn type or a different type, but it's just seven eighths inches long. Yeah, I've got I've got more of this stuff in small pieces, and I've got lots of little flakes, debitage flakes, I call them, of various heat treated jaspers and stuff that have a lot of nice colors. So yeah, it cost me about five bucks to ship this. So, you know, bid $6 or more, okay? 5K05. This one is the stemmed point from the video. Yeah, it has a little defect right there that I napped into it. It's not a stone defect. It's a napping defect. Okay, so this was a, a video. This is a video point. I did grind it here a little bit, yeah. So it's like a first stage, kind of a first stage Cody looking point, although it's too thin. Cody points are very robust in there. They're, they're very uh, durable. They, I mean, they look durable. Yeah, this one I got, I was able to thin this way down. I think it is a raw piece, but I can't remember if it's raw or heat treat. Okay, kind of translucent. Yeah. Nice material. And I do have more of this that I'm going to make some arrowheads out of. Most of the stuff that I have of this, I'm using on side projects. So I only have a few pieces of this left over for auction pieces. Okay. And last but not least, no, I got one more after this. Um, let's see, 5K06. Yeah, these are the two uh, natural tool points I did on video. These are both on video. Okay, I was going to haft these, but again, I ran out of time. So you're going to get them just like this. All right. You can see them all on video. You can see my struggles and my fusses. I usually fuss a lot when I'm using natural tools until I get used to them again. It's a, it's a big learning curve, the natural tool stuff for me. I, don't, I can't just get right back into it. Let's see, three and a half inches on that one. Two and three quarters on that one. Yeah, when I when I get back into natural tools, I, I have to uh, get into a certain mindset that it, I need to do a lot more maintaining on the tools themselves. I try to forget that whole aspect when I'm napping so it doesn't distract me. But when you get back into, when I get back into natural tools, I got to do a lot of maintenance on the tools, so... It's a whole a whole different mindset in more ways than one. Okay, I forgot to include. I have a I have a box and I forgot to write a number for it. Let's see. Five K zero seven. Okay, I do have a box this week. All right. 5K07 is a box of brokes and bifaces. Uh, this is one of the uh, points that I was making this morning. Let's see if I can put it back together without taking it out of the bag. I snapped it and I said, no, I'm not going to do these. I'm not going to try to do more of these this uh, today. Where'd it go? See that? I snapped it as I was notching it. This is a quartz crystal. So I snapped it there, and look where it broke. It's so weird. The path of least resistance is right there, which is weird. See that? I don't understand it, and I don't even want to try. Okay, see, I was trying to make a set of three, you know, approximately the same size. 
Anyway, this is part of this box of brokes and bifaces. This is just, uh, I believe it's a heat treat, root beerish looking stuff. Yeah. It's just thick, right? So I didn't want to mess with it. And I think I snapped it too, which is another bummer. Uh, this one, I snapped it the other day. This is a low-grade Georgetown. Okay, so be aware. This needs heat, I think. This is not a high-grade Georgetown, although it might look like it. It is a Georgetown, but it's extremely difficult. Um, well, I say extremely because I don't like this stuff. Some guys love it. Yeah, it's hard to nap as far as... It's it's tough to nap, but they seem to love it. I, I can't stand it. Anyway. Uh, this is a raw Texas amoeba chert. Yeah. This is high grade except for that little spot there. I hope it doesn't give you any trouble. That is concrete right in there. I managed to nap across it, and it can be napped through, but you've got to hit pretty hard and with a robust flake to get through that. If you hit it with thin flakes, it's going to step right there, and you're going to have an island. That's probably the worst spot for this particular type of inclusion of concrete. How big is this? Let's see. Four and three-eighths. The other pieces are, let's see, three and a half, three and a half, three and an eighth. Now, this root beer stuff, I got some more pieces in here. Yeah, these three pieces of root beer stuff, uh, I'm going to share with you guys, you know, because uh, I do have, I've got stuff that's a little bit better quality than this. Got to be honest, right? And I, um, I didn't want to mess with these too much because they have like these inclusions and stuff in them. If you, if you get that thinned down, it sh you should be able to eliminate that cortex. This one here, I wasn't sure if this, it's got a seam in it. See that? And it looks like it goes through there, but I don't know if that's healed or not. You should be able to at least get two inches out of it. Yeah. If that opens up. It doesn't look like it's uh, completely cracked. It just looks like it does have a, a little bit of a weakness at that spot. Okay. Um, yeah, so these all have slight issues. See, there's a little bit of concrete in there. So that's why I'm, I'm offering these. Otherwise, I'd keep them because I got lots of stuff I need to make out of that root beer stuff. All right, this one is a raw piece of chert that I blew out the barb, and I said, man, the only thing I could do with it now is maybe make a knife blade out of it. And I said, nah, I'll just sell it this way what i did was i went all the way around and i thinned it down and i got it to the point where i needed a notch where i needed to notch it i started notching it with pressure and then the first punch flake that i was able to take took out a flake and wiped out the whole barb the very first punch yeah wiped out the barb so i said no i don't know I don't really like punch work. That's why I don't do much of it. It was a bummer. Let's see. Three and five eighths. Uh, and it's two inches wide. The uh, Let's do the millimeters. Like, that way I can get to the width to thickness ratio. It's pretty thin. Let's say 50. Millimeter by seven. So that's seven to one. Okay, it's pretty good, I think. Ah. And the rest of these are just typical brokes. All right, I don't know if I have the complete point and body on these. Some of these I don't have the top part, like this one. I don't have the top part. This is a uh, Georgetown-ish. It's a Texas shirt. It's high grade, but it's just broken. This is kind of like that uh, Georgetown blue that they talk about. See how the difference in color there? This one is more is a higher, much higher grade than this. Okay, 
All right, I'll give you a chance to look. This is also that Georgetown bluish type stuff. Okay, and it's, it's higher grade than this grayish. But it's delicate, and it will snap in half, as you can see. Yeah, what snapped it was this, this flake right there. All right, what else? What else do I got in here? I got another one I snapped in half. Yeah, I snapped them. These are for, from the last three weeks, so it wasn't all this week. Although, I did snap some this week. This is a heat treat, Texas jerk. Uh, I wasn't feeling all that well. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's an excuse. But, uh, yeah, I wasn't feeling all that well yesterday. So I didn't nap at all because I was thinking I was going to snap everything if I napped yesterday. This is a heat treat. It's a mystery heat treat. I don't know what this is. But it's interesting. It's got interesting colors to it. But, of course, I snapped it. Uh, let's see. I snapped this heat treat. I think I might have snapped this one of these on video. Was it this one? No. This was the one I snapped on video doing it with natural tools. Okay? It's high-grade stuff, and I was going to make arrowheads out of the each half, but I said, no. It's going in the Brooks and by faces box for someone else to enjoy. It's high-grade. I believe it's raw. It's high-grade stuff. This one is a heat treat. It is a good heat treat. It's got some inconsistencies in it, and I think that's what messed me up as I was hitting it way too hard. It's This is all my mistake. There's no there's no defects in it, in the material. I just hit it way too hard, hoping that uh, I'd get lucky and thin it down uh, quick, I suppose. Anyway, I suppose. I don't remember exactly why I break these. This is a... Uh, I believe this is a heat treat. And what else do I got in here? That's it. This little pieces. This is the same stuff as this. It's a mystery what it is, but it's interesting material. It naps very well if you're careful. Did I measure, did I measure this one? This one's four and a half by two and a half. Okay. I will wrap this one separately so it doesn't get all banged up. Okay, that's it. Seven items. I'm going to read off my cheat notes very fast, and then that's it. Okay, these are my cheat notes. Yeah, there's a better description of the auction in the description box below. Okay, there will be an auction every Monday. Even if there's an eclipse, like today. Yeah. And do I have a good view where I am in uh, south southeastern Vermont? Yes, I do. It's almost 100% eclipse expected. And it's going to be it's going to be cool. All right. Please look at my previous auctions to see how they work. Okay? And Auction 3J has a demo. Auction 3J. So if you want to find out how to do the auction stuff, uh, I do a demo in Auction 3J. You just type in Jack Crafty, Auction 3J, hit the return button. It'll bring you to this video, and then you can see a demo that I I used my tablet. Okay? That's in case you want to do that. Uh, you bid in the comment section. Okay? Bid in the comment section. Look and see. In the comment section, you'll see a bunch of stuff in there already because I put comments in there that describe the items. You bid under the comments I put in there. Okay? Just make sure also when you bid that you put the item number that you want to bid on. If you're not sure that you're putting your bid in the right spot, put the item number in with your bid. Like, uh, you know, like 10, 10 bucks for 5K04. Just write in $10 for 5K04 if that's what you're going to bid on. Okay, as an example. All right, I will like your comment if I see it. That's important. So that's how you know that I saw your comment if you get a like on it. If you don't see a like on it right away, that means I'm either being lazy, I got distracted, I'm looking at the eclipse, or I fell asleep, or something. Okay, just give me some time. But as the time approaches the end of the auction, I will check more often. Yeah, um, during the last hour of the auction, uh, I check all the time. I make sure that no one bugs me, and I don't fall asleep, or I don't watch an eclipse, or whatever. Okay?
Try not to bid at the last minute. Yeah, I'm using YouTube's time tracker, which is not very good. It's not very accurate, but I got to use it because everybody sees it. And if it says you're late, you will be late. So try not to bid at the last minute. Unless you're into taking risks, then go right ahead. All right. Shipping is free in the U.S. All right. Shipping is uh, not free if it's international. I will charge extra for international, two different rates. If it's a light package, I charge 10 bucks, And if it's a heavy package, I charge 20 for shipping. Now, the actual shipping for international is a lot more than this. Okay, so I'm discounting your shipping international by a lot. Last time I shipped uh, something heavy, it was like 40 something dollars. So I'm giving you a big discount by only charging you 20 Yeah. As an example. All right. I don't know where that one went. I forget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't remember. All right. I will provide tracking numbers. I accept PayPal and Venmo and Cash App and checks or money orders. Uh, or I can send you an electronic invoice that you can pay with a credit card. I prefer PayPal. That's what I do all my business on, pretty much. But I do also have these other options, which are perfectly okay. It's no trouble for me to, to accept payments through there. I can send you requests through all of these. It's not a problem. If that's what you want. Okay. Uh, winners will be announced at 9.01 p.m. Eastern Time. This is not a live auction. I post this video, and then I wait until 9.01 to start announcing the winners. Okay, so get your bids in before 9 p.m. Eastern. All right, and if you're, it depends on your time zone. It ends at 8 p.m. Central for the Central time zone people. It ends at 7 if you're on Mountain Time. It ends at 6 if you're on Pacific Time. Okay, the auction ends at the top of the hour. So when you're bidding at the last minute, just remember you have to bid before the top of the hour. I start announcing the winners at one minute past the hour just so I can keep refreshing and keep refreshing. And uh, I know exactly when everyone's bidding. And I can, you know, that 60 seconds gives me time to refresh and look at all the bids so that I can announce who won. Okay? Don't wait until 9, uh, 9 and then 57 seconds because you will be late. Yeah, I'll catch you. Wait, you can bid at 8.59 and then, uh, let's see, what is it? You can bid just before it closes, but don't wait until after the hour, okay? I'm mixing myself up there. All right, you will be notified in the comments section if you are the winner. Yeah, this is important if you're new. I don't have any other way to contact you other than to notify you through the comment section. So if you're new... Make sure when you win, please email me your info, your name, your real name, your address, your payment methods, and anything else you want to include in your email uh, so I know who to send it to and how to make payment arrangements and all that stuff, okay? So this is very important if you're new. Pay attention to the comment section. I will announce the winners there. I have no other way to notify you, and I'm not going to look you up on Facebook or anything else. Definitely not, all right? So pay attention to the comment section if you're new. That's where you will be announced the winner if you win. Okay. The guys that have already done this before, there's no problem. They already know what's going on. All right. And I already have your info on file in my notebook. Okay. So that's it for the cheat notes. Um, yep. Yeah, I hope you guys have a good week. Had a good weekend. I hope you have a good uh, eclipse day. And good luck.